Now Isaiah 14, 12 to 14 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how thou art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. If we look at 13 and 14, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. This is the beginning of satanic freedom. Do as thou wilt. Not your will, but my will be done. What kind of elemental wickedness was found in Lucifer, Satan? Great pride due to his majestic and radiant outward appearance, as well as his very high position and great power corrupted this prominent archangel. Even to the point of insulting his creator, he saw no reason why he actually should not replace God's throne with his own and be in control of everything. Consequently, he developed a foolish, unruly and defiant stance against God, never repenting nor relenting, even to this very day. Satan's self-importance obsessed and overcame him, rather than humble himself in front of God by admitting that he was wrong to speak out against him, he hated God for punishing him and wanted to overpower God, his creator, and subsequently to name himself God. Now let's look at some of the characteristics of Lucifer. He was a liar, a murderer, a destroyer, he's an imitator, he's wrathful, he's full of resentment and anger and hatred toward God and man because God kicked him out of heaven and because he cannot be forgiven and man can and is forgiven he's full of pride job 41 uh, verse 34 says he is the king of all people who operate in pride he is a perverter he is a corrupter he is discontent and insecure these are just some of the characteristics of the being lucifer if we operate in these characteristics and we do not repent of them we give glory to the enemy if you look into the world today what is it full of it's full of lies it's full of murder it's full of destruction it's full of imitation just look on the internet everybody's trying to look like a kardashian well some people anyway and it's strange because i sometimes want to say to these people do you know you don't even look human humans don't look like this but everybody is looking at everyone else's life and wanting to imitate it, not understanding that we are all on our own journey in life. We have fingerprints for a reason, but we continue to allow the devil to deceive us in comparing ourselves. And comparison is a killer because Satan, Lucifer, was stupid enough to compare himself to the almighty God. And because of his beauty, he corrupted himself and thought that rather than just being a covering of my creator, rather than my wings just covering his throne, rather than just being in his presence, rather than just creating sweet music for the adoration of his glory, no, I should be the focal point of that adoration rather than giving it. How stupid. As smart as Satan is, he is also a fool. He's a perverter and a corrupter. Satan is a perverter. To pervert is to distort or to change something from its original or intended use. We were created to give pleasure to God. Revelations 4, 17. Satan distorts what has been given by God to man for his blessing and benefit. There is no blessing from God that Satan does not distort. Many times Satan distorts the truth of God's word so that man has a misunderstanding of some important attributes of God or his glorious gospel. This is one of Satan's top goals. He hopes that he can lead someone astray rather than them submitting to the authority of the Most High God. When we buy into a corruption of Satan, he has an open door into our hearts. And it is through these open doors Satan achieves his ultimate goal of perverting the highest of God's creation, us, human beings, thus becoming God over them and receiving worship and glory from their lives. Worship and glory 
that belongs to God. One of the major doors Satan steps through to achieve this goal is discontent. There is nothing good that God has created that Satan hasn't corrupted. Look at music. Music is a great resource for worship, great resource for praise. It can change your mood. It can make you sad. It can make you happy. It can make you angry. Satan has corrupted that wavelength and turned it into something so much more sinister than it was intended to be. We know from the Bible that music can play a demon out of you. Therefore, a music can play a demon in you. And this is why we go so hard at secular music. If it didn't originate in heaven, then it's originating from a demon. And you are playing spirits into yourself when you listen to these things. When you go to the concerts of the Beyonce's and the Drake's of this world, you are partaking in witchcraft ceremonies. Because you don't understand the spirit realm, you don't understand that by going to these ceremonies and partaking in this music which has been conjured in hell, you are actually making agreements with the kingdom of darkness. And we will cover more of this when we go into covenants. But I mentioned at the beginning of this video that God needs your agreement for him to work in your life. And so does Satan because the kingdom of darkness is the direct antithesis to the kingdom of light. So when you uh, agree with God, you are blessed. But when you agree with Satan, you are cursed. Discontent and insecure. Satan the being is a very discontent and insecure being. He hated his position in heaven. He was insecure and he tries to pass that along and down into us. He wants us to feel that we are owed more than God has given us. He wants to distort our perception of our very existence. He wants to corrupt the reason why we believe we are here. He wants to distort our perception of who God is. He wants us to think as God as someone who is not equitable, who is not fair and who is not just. Hence why we do the things we do and we commit the sins we commit because we do not totally believe that God is fair and that he is just. So we seek other ways and means of achieving things that God may have had planned for us, but not for now, or he may not have planned for us at all. But ultimately he wants to change our mind about who we think God is and his goodness and we will look at this later on in another episode when we talk about satan's decision tree but now let's look at satan's characteristics in contrast to that of jesus christ he never used money or possessions to promote himself and this is deliberately demonstrated if we look at matthew 8 19 to 20 then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He did not seek fame or fortune, nor did he crave the affirmation or adulation of men. Philippians 2 verse 5 In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the death even death on the cross we see here jesus god in the flesh was humble he did not come to establish and to take all of the rights that he could have being the son of god being God in the flesh he could have come in princely or kingly attire he could have come with great pomp and ceremony but no he came to be a servant he took on human likeness and if we look at Isaiah 53 and 2 we see that Jesus was not insecure or discontent with his physical form in any way the scripture tells us according to the stanza of men he was not beautiful in Isaiah 53 verse 2 says that there was no beauty that we should desire him 
Some would even go so far as to say that Jesus was ugly. Yet, even with his physical disadvantages, we don't see anywhere in the scripture he expresses any discontent or insecurity about his physical form. Yes, people who loved Jesus loved him for his character, loved him for what was inside of him. I would hazard a guess to say that even though he only died at 33 years old, he looked probably about 50 or 60. This is a man who from the age of 30 lived a very uncomfortable life. We see Jesus cry. We never see him really laugh. The stresses and the strains of the sins of the world was upon his shoulders in Gethsemane. I would say that he looked extremely physically burdened, yet we do not hear about the Savior's insecurity, about anything so trivial as his appearance. Jesus, the picture of humility, full of the Holy Spirit, with power to crush anything or anyone that came in his direction. Yet he is the picture of humility, the exact antithesis of Satan. Not seeking fame or fortune, not seeking or craving the affirmation and adulation of men like we see in the celebrity world or Hollywood or social media these days, the complete antithesis to Satan who wants to ascend who wants the glory, who wants the attention, who wants the adulation that actually belongs to God. Never using money or possessions to promote himself, as we see now even in churches, to draw people. People are using the gospel of prosperity. There's nothing wrong with being prosperous in the natural. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having things. But Jesus never used money or wealth or fame as a tool to attract people to follow him. He actually gives people the reality of what following him can be like. He tells his disciples that don't worry if you're hated because they hated him first. He says in the scriptures that no man builds a tower without first counting the cost. Salvation is free but there's a price to follow Christ. All these things are the antithesis of Satan who wants to lure you and to trick you into things that you do not understand the consequence of.